video is going to be all about light. If you've got a calculator, go ahead and pull it out. If not, there's one on my website you can use online. And make sure you get your star charts too because there's going to be some stuff on that that you're going to want to know where it's at. So when we're talking about light, you know that light can be either a wave or a particle. And you're going to be expected to describe and calculate different aspects of light. The first of those is going to be speed. Now when we're talking about speed and light, we're talking about speed in a vacuum, but it happens to be a constant and we use the letter C to indicate that constant. And then both of these numbers are worth memorizing. C can equal 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's going to be a number that's going to be on your star chart, so you don't necessarily have to memorize that. But the other one, 3.0 times 10 to the 17th nanometers per second, you're going to use this when you're assuming a vacuum and when we start talking about different wavelengths of light, they're going to be in nanometers. So that's going to be the one that you're going to need. A wavelength. This little symbol right here, that upside down Y, that's called lambda. It's going to indicate wavelength. It's the length between corresponding parts of adjacent crests, and crests are the top of the wave. And then frequency, you're going to see the letter V. That it's also called nu in Greek. Uh, but it's the number of crests that point given per second in time. That unit's going to be either cycles per second or in hertz, whereas wavelengths can be in any type of uh, unit you want it to be. So this is a wavelength. You can see the amplitude. We didn't talk about this, but it's how high the wave goes. The wavelength is from the crest of one wave to the crest of another wave, and the bottom of these are considered troughs. But if you take a look at different kinds of waves, this top wave is a wave that has really high frequency. You can see it goes up and down very, very rapidly. You know, a second of time could be something like this. Whereas the other one, the one, or the one on the bottom of it, a second, second of time is probably that right there. So it's one wavelength per second, whereas this one has five wavelengths per second. Now, visible light has a wavelength between 700 and 400 nanometers. You need to memorize those two numbers. And they correspond down here at the bottom. Roy G. Bibb, I know you've seen it before. Roy will be the 700 end, that's red. And V, as in violet, would be on the 400 end. So it goes from longest wavelength to shortest wavelength. OK, when we're talking about light, we're going to do some calculations with it. And here is your formula. This is the formula. It is on the star chart, but it's written as C equals lambda f. Same thing, where V, C is the speed of light, which can be either time to the 8th or to the 17th, uh, depending on what units you're working with. Let's look at this problem. You have a wavelength that's known to be 550 nanometers. What is this frequency? Well, we're given uh, lambda nanometers you can, in uh, nanometers, so we're going to use 3.0 times 10 to 17th nanometers per second. So here's our equation, lambda v. We have to solve for v. So we're going to divide out the lambda, so c divided by lambda equals v. And then you just plug and shove. And remember, if you go back to your problem, it only gives you two sig figs. Your answer is going to be in two significant figures. So it's going to equal 5.5 times 10 to 14, or it'll be in hertz. Okay, problem two. So you're starting out with a frequency. I'm going to use f equals 9.45 times 10 to the 14th. We're going to use the speed of light. See so the wavelength. Now, once we have the wavelength, we're going to see if it falls between that 700 and 400 nanometers to see if it's visible. So our equation, we're going to look for lambda this time, so it's C divided by V equals lambda. So it's 9.4, so we have three sig figs over here, so it's going to be point, oops, 0 0.00315, that should be in nanometers. So if it's obviously a lot less than 400 nanometers, so it's not big. Does a longer or shorter wavelength have the higher frequency? Well, it's shorter. Shorter wavelengths have the highest frequency. And then problem four, are wavelengths and frequency inversely related? Well, you have your equation involving wavelengths and frequency. You can rearrange that to be whatever you want to be over lambda equals volume. And you're dividing it over here and multiplying over here. So they're going to be inversely related. So if we have a wavelength that's in some centimeters, we're going to try to find out if it's visible. You just go back through and do your dimensional analysis like we learned in unit two to see if it's and convert it back to a nanometers to see if it's visible. So you do your map, multiply the top, divide it by the bottom. And that gives you an insanely small number, 7.23 times 10 to negative 16th nanometers. And obviously that's well short of our 400 nanometer mark, so it's not visible either. Okay, go ahead and pause this and see if you can do these practice problems on your own.
We've been talking about light as a wave, now let's talk about light as a particle. When we talk about light as particles, we tend to call it a photon. And when we're working with photons, our main concern is the energy. Our unit for energy is joule. I'm going to have two equations, uh, both of which are on your star chart, so you don't really have to memorize them. So E is going to stand for the energy, and then F is frequency, and then over here, the E still for energy, the C is still the speed of light, and then H is a new constant. H is Planck's constant. It's, at, it's also on your star chart, and it's 6.63 times 10 to the negative fourth joules per second. You're going to be using that a lot. But you see you have two different equations, one that involves frequency and one that involves lambda. So our first example problem actually has two different questions involved in it. The first one is taking a frequency and establishing and finding out what the energy is. So energy equals HF. Uh, we have Planck's constant and frequency equals 7.85 times 10 to the 15th. So all you do and do is 7.85 times 10 to the 15th multiplied by Planck's constant which was 6.63 times 10 to negative 34. And that'll give your energy in joules. So we're in three sig figs, so it's 5.20 times 10 to negative 18 joules. And now we gotta find out is this light like visible like visible. So we gotta take our frequency and bring it all the way back to wavelength. And you can just use C equals lambda F for that. Turns it into C over frequency equals lambda. So we're going to use 3.0 times 10 to the 17th divided by our frequency, which is 7.85 E15. And that gives us 38.2 nanometers, which is still short of our 400 nanometers, so it's not visible. Okay, you could go back and use that equation, or you could use the other equation we gave you, which was E equals Planck times speed of light over lambda, in which case you rearrange that equals lambda times Planck's speed over the energy. Remember that's Planck's constant, speed of light constant, just plug the energy right into there and do the math. Next one, you have a wavelength of 550 that wants the energy. So we're going to use E equals HC over lambda. It's just a plug and chug formula. That gives you 3.3656. Okay, now it's going to start you off at energy, and it wants to know if it's visible. So you're going to use E energy equals planks times speed over wavelength. Now we're going to solve for wavelength to see if it's visible. So we just do the switcheroo. Wavelength equals planks speed over energy. That gives you 597 uh, nanometers. So this is finally within our 7 to 400 nanometer range. So yes, this light is visible. So go ahead and pause this and practice. There you go. Now that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, I guess it does look pretty good. I wouldn't have done it any different myself.